like to welcome everyone here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to give El Shaddai, Adonai, the worship, the honor for how much he has helped us in the month of January. This is the last Sunday of the month. Tomorrow is the very last day of the month. He has helped us so much in the schedule of divine direction. And today we are going to look at the climax of the subject of divine direction. Everything we have been saying has been pointing to what we are about to say today. For somebody, this might be one of the most important lessons you would learn all your life. And this is titled, Channels of divine direction. Channels of divine direction. We'll get this done, get it out of the way, then we come to the matter of vengeance. Psalm 29, verse 3 and verse 4. It said, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Psalm 85 and in verse 9. He said, I will hear. Verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people. And to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Our objective this morning is, first of all, to understand the different ways that God speaks. The different ways that God speaks or gives us directions. What are the different ways? And number two, to find out how to know whether what we heard is from God or not. How to confirm that what we heard is from God. Very important. In Job chapter 33 verse 14 all the way to verse 17, scriptures make it clear that it says, for God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth it not. So God speaks once and again, or over and over, but man is not perceiving it. He's not hearing. It's a challenge. God speaketh once, yet twice. Man perceived it not. He went for that to say, in the vision of the night, in a dream, also in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, he is talking, but they are not hearing. So that makes it clear that God is speaking over and over, Man is not hearing, and that God speaks again and again. In Hosea chapter 12, verse 10, he said, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and used similitudes, sim similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. The meaning of that is that there are multiple ways in which God communicates. Multiple ways. I've used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. I've spoken again and again. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, the scriptures make it clear. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth, proceedeth, proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. That is, words, voices, God is always having things that proceed out of of his mouth. So very, very quickly, what are the ways in which God speaks? Number one, through the word. Through the word. The word of God, the Bible. Psalm 29 verse 3 to 4. Psalm 29 verse 3 to 4. He said, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. And you know the water is the word that he might sanctify them by the washing of the water by the word. 
The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Upon the waters. The God of glory thundering. The Lord is upon many waters. What is the water? Is the word. Ephesians 5.26 That he might sanctify them by the washing of the water by the word. So the word of God is water. And the voice of God is upon the waters. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 21. 1 Samuel 3.21 The Bible said And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So God reveals himself and he speaks through the word. What does that mean? It means that the voice of God is within the verse of scripture. His voice is in the verse. Also, he causes particular verses to stand out to you to address some issues at occasions. That is, I've mentioned two ways now in which the, the word of God speaks to you. First of all, his voice comes out of the verse. And also, you are handling a situation and trying to find which way to go and a particular scripture, a verse just stands out as if that verse was written with that problem in mind. I mean, if you hear what, what I'm saying now, and I'm going to give you practical examples. God's servant Bishop David Oedipo was in Kaduna, sorry, in Ilorin, around the year of 1982 to 83. And he was wondering whether to go to Kaduna, relocate to Kaduna or not. And he, according to what he said, I think he had traveled in back and forth. Lord, what are you saying? What do I do? Then he said he carried the Bible and the Bible literally opened spontaneously to Acts chapter 22 verse 10. Arise, go to Damascus. And he said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise and go into Damascus. And there it shall be told thee of all the things which are appointed unto thee to do. And the Damascus, then he knew the meaning immediately because Damascus was the city of persecution in the Bible days. And, and, and the north then was the center, and still the center of persecution of, of the Christian gospel till tomorrow. And he, he got on the spot and he went to his wife and said, God has spoken to me. We are going to Kaduna. That is out of the scripture, the voice came. Now, when we were, now, I'm going to use a lot of practical examples so you understand. When we were about to go to Taraba State, Jalingo for crusade, there were three things that were going to hinder our going. First of all, terrorism was very, very, I mean, drastic, northeast. And you are talking of, we, we just heard about some things that happened around Taco and all that, and it was very right. Number two, New restrictions came out COVID-wise that large gatherings shouldn't hold. People were still wondering what to do. And, open it. and then number three, as the crusade drew near, we realized that it fell exactly on the religious holiday of the people of the other side of the north. Exactly the day of the crusade, the religious holiday, or the whole religion holiday was starting. Now we have never done a crusade that clashed with such a holiday before, never. Because we don't want to look like we are confrontational in any way. Am I communicating? In a, in a religiously sensitive country. So by the one day to the crusade, my wife said, are we preparing for the crusade? I said, I'm not sure whether we are going. I'm not sure whether we are going. Because, I mean, the, the, what they are talking about, restriction in the air, and we are talking about terrorism in that side, and we are talking about, um, it's a, 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 a holiday of the other religion, and the crusade is on the same day. While I was in that process, Lord, what are you saying? And the scriptures moved. Bam. Lift up your head, so ye gates, and be thou lifted, you everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in. I don't know how I arrived at that scripture just at that moment. 
Psalm 24, verse 7, all the way to verse 10. Lift your head, so ye gates. And be ye lifted up, you everlasting dust. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord of hosts. Mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift up your head, ye everlasting dust. And the king of glory shall come in. It started from verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Lord, what are you saying? He said, I am the owner of the earth. And I can go anywhere when I want. Out of that scripture, the earth is the Lord. What are you saying, Lord? He said, I am waiting for you there. <laughs> Out of that scripture, it collided with Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have hold him, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Now, here is it, verse 2. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I am the owner of the earth. I can go anywhere I want per time. That voice was inside that verse. What are you saying, Lord? I am waiting for you there. I'm the Lord of foes. I am there with my armies. I told my wife, I said, God has spoken to me. We are going there for sure. She said, wow, is that right? I said, we have gone. <laughs> and, the, and every trace of trepidation, uncertainty, any little trace of agitation dried up. When we landed at the airport, the driver who took us, it was only a terrorism story he was telling us. <laughs> I said, why are people driving like this? Is it because of the terrorism in this, uh, in this uh, area? The cars were parking by the roadside, parking by the roadside. Oh, it's the when they see a convoy of cars coming like this, they pack say, since the terrorism situation. Wow. We met another high ranking officer of the land. The same. They're happy we have come. That in fact, the last time the terrorists came, they overwhelmed the soldier. <laughs> but God said, I am waiting for you. Not one knockout was heard. Not one knockout was heard. But they said the officials of the land told us that for the last 10 years, this is the safest meeting they have had. Safest. Why? God spoke and we moved. And as for gathering of crowd, they are not sure whether they have seen a crowd, expect maybe a bunky or something. And it was, and we decreed on Friday, the very last night of the crusade, Against the terrorists that they should begin to waste themselves. Less than one week later, on Wednesday of the following week, they killed the head of one of the major terrorist groups in this country. The other terrorist group came against him. He detonated himself. Till tomorrow he is buried forever. That is when God speaks. You see, people think that it is only when you see vision that God has spoken. I am telling you, now, by the time we are through this morning, every one of you, your ears, your eyes, and your heart shall open. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. That's the rubber crusade they were telling you about now. The pastor there was calling people there, was calling a woman there, one of the outright, we are not sure. Until... 24 hours. And God spoke and said, we are gone. We are going. Give the Lord a big clap of hand here. And you take your seat. Through the word, God speaks. Number two is true. Inner peace. Inner peace. Peace of heart or mind. God uses inward peace. To confirm whether a certain decision is right or wrong. The presence of peace, the absence of peace, 
as a confirmation. Psalm 85 verse 8. We read it already. I will hear what the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace. He will speak peace. The voice of the Lord carries peace. Direction from God carries peace. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. I'd like you to look at that in the Amplified Version. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. That's the way the Amplified Version puts verse 7. And the peace of God, that, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, the peace which stands guard over your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. One of the trans, I thought it was Amplified, it said, the peace of God shall serve as umpire, refree. Over your heart. How is that? This is how it goes. First, three ways. First of all, the presence of peace. Second is the absence of peace. Call it presence of peace, green light. Absence of peace, red light. I am not sure, yellow light. That is, there are decisions you want to make, steps you want to make. Your peace is massive. That is, go ahead, green light. There is another one, you lost peace completely. That is, don't make any move. There is a third realm where you can't say peace is there, and you cannot say peace is not there. You are not sure what you feel. That is, yellow light. Green light means go. Go. Red light means don't go. That is, peace is present, is green light means go. Peace is absent, is red light means don't move. Don't go. I am not sure. Yellow light means wait. Wait until you know what you feel, until you can tell what you are sensing. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? If God is speaking to you, say it louder, amen. Another way to say it is, decisions, you are not comfortable with. Something inside you is not right. You are trying to make a move. It may be a business move, a marital move. Something inside you is not right. And then you hold on. The, one day I came home from home for holidays as a medical student and I met someone prophesying. I've told this story many times. The moment I heard this person and cited this person, every piece disappeared. I was troubled, uncomfortable. Everybody was hailing this person as a mighty power. I said, no, 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 this is not God. In a short while, it was confirmed. I was meant to travel for an occasion, an event that was family related. And I had zero peace. Coupled with the fact that the circumstance did not allow, peace was zero. Everything was said. Flight movement was ready. Everything. And I said, this trip, I won't make it. The outcome of it was that I thank God I didn't make it. Because events that played out. If I was present, it would be disastrous. I, didn't, I thank God I didn't make it. My wife and I travel all the time together. One journey I told her, you are not going for this journey. She said, eh. I said, yes. You won't travel with me for this one. She said, okay, sir. I waited at home. On the journey, I was telling her the story of the journey. We have not reached the destination. He said, thank you for stopping me. Thank you. For <laughs> we have not 
reach the, the destination yet. He said, thank you, thank you. How? For days, she would have not recovered from the impact of that journey. I didn't hear anything. I just felt and knew she shouldn't go on that journey. Never struggle to feel good about what you have no peace. Never struggle to feel right concerning any issue you lost your peace. Don't force yourself. That was how Saul lost the kingdom. And missed out on the will of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 12. Saul said, I forced myself. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgad. And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered this a bond of it. Anything you want to force yourself to do, check it. Something may be wrong. Don't force yourself to move to go on a journey. Don't force yourself to do this or do that. Don't force yourself. Don't force yourself. Paul the apostle was moving at one time, ministering, and there was a woman prophesying in Acts chapter 16. He said, These are the servants of the Most High God that brought bring to us the word of salvation. These are the servants of the Most High God. What she was saying, nothing was wrong with it. The content of the prophecy was right. Paul the apostle is the servant of the Lord. But Paul lost his peace. Every time he heard the word, peace died. In verse 18, she did this many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out the same hour. One woman told me, how that? Her husband kept forcing her to go to a particular church, in quote. She said she enters. Miracles seem to be happening. Prophecies seem to be happening. But she can't feel a trace of God's presence. And also peace is zero. So he told the husband, please sir, have mercy on me. If you want, you can be going. I can't go to this kind of place. It was confirmed to the man later that that was not a place to go. I am saying this because this woman was talking what appears to be godly. These are the servants of God, but she was talking by the wrong spirit. Don't be moved by what you are seeing around you. Confirm with the peace you have in your heart. Don't be moved by any manifestation, no matter how spiritual it may appear. Confirm by inner peace. How do you feel inside? Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody told me sometime, while, while we're still young, younger men, we're not married yet, he has found who to marry. And then he came and prophesied somebody for me. Did you hear what I said? He prophesied somebody for me. He was pitying me that I have not found somebody to marry. And the person he prophesied to me was one of the most spiritual persons that was around. Spiritual in every sense. Firebrand. But the moment I heard that, I was grieved inside. What suggestion is this? Nothing is wrong with that person, but this is not the person for me. And God confirmed it. Somebody say a loud amen. So you use inward peace. The presence of peace or the absence of peace to confirm the direction you are having. If anybody is receiving anything so far, shout a loud amen. If you are receiving anything so far, shout the loudest amen. Can I move to the point number three? Number three is through the inward witness. I just mentioned inward peace. And now I am mentioning the inward witness. What is, what, which one is this one? This is called the witness of the spirit. 
it is inner knowing. Knowing. You know? the, the peace is an emo emotion. But this is more like information. Inside information. The last one was inside emotion. But this is inside information. It's a knowing. Inner knowing. Inner perception. You didn't hear anything. You didn't see anything. You just know something. The way you know your name. You just know. Something like what people call a gut feeling. You just, right inside, you just, you just know. In Romans chapter 8 verse 16, it is the same way you didn't need a prophet to tell you that you are born again. The spirit is said for himself, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. When you give your life to Christ, you didn't need anybody to prophesy to you that now you are a child of God. Something inside you knows that you belong to God. This is how this is. Inner knowing. At times it flows with inner joy. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 20. 1 John chapter 2 verse 20. It says you have an unction from the Holy One. The Holy Spirit. And you know all things. The Holy Ghost causes you to know several things. By the unction that you have. This is a major way in which our master Jesus operated. It's also a major way in which the word of knowledge operates. In Mark chapter 5 verse 30, when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, the Bible says, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself, not that he heard something or saw something, he just knew in himself. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 1, all the way to verse 4, and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bird. And Jesus seemed their face said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And, and behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemed. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, he knew just, just like that. Knowing. He said to them, Why do you think evil in your heart? We can go over so many scriptures. Mark chapter 12. Verse 15, we saw about Jesus also knowing. Shall we give or shall we not give to Caesar and so on? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, he said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Luke eleven sixteen. Jesus knowing, 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 knowing. And others tempt him, sought of him a sign from heaven. Next verse. But he, knowing their thoughts, knowing, knowing, knowing. Before I ever saw anything or heard anything, this was a very, very heavy way in which I got a lot of direction, guidance, and revelation. Knowing, knowing, knowing. Somebody receiving something here, say a louder amen. You are receiving something here, say a louder amen. Most godly women and godly wives have these knowings and perceptions. They will suddenly tell their husband, this man is not a good friend. Not just wives, women, general. This man is not a good man. Not a, say, ah, he's my best friend. Say, no, 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 no. He's not a, you are the one calling him your best friend. How do you know? I don't know. Did you see something? I, no. Did you hear something? No. Woman, you have come again. But just be careful with him. At the end of the day, it is proved. Because of that inward knowing. One day, <laughs> a man who is of white color, you know, um, I assume that anybody who is Caucasian or foreign is a person of character integrity. He came to me. Before he opened his mouth to say one word, I knew he was about to tell a lie. Hello? And then the next form of leading now came. I knew, then I heard. That's the one I will go to the next point. He's about to tell you a lie. He's about to say they stole his back. But it is not true. So I began to wait for the action to play. And he played the action. Oh, wow. Really? I could have been deceived or carry 
prevailed over sentiment because of who he was. But I had an inward knowing. One day a fake bishop came to me. I'm sure you, you know the story of that fake bishop. He sent me a text first that he was um, he came to Nigeria from is it Liberia or somewhere. He's stranded and so on and so forth. And that he's stuck somewhere in Benue State. I linked him up with our pastor in Benue State. One thing to help him. And I asked him to come. He came with, with, to my office with his uh, uh, Air Force officer, uh, uh, person who assisted him somewhere, with his daughter who came with him. And they all came to my office. The moment I cited him, phew, fake, fake, fake. I knew on this point. So I said, oh, this is your friend. This is your daughter. Long story made short. Sure. By the time the Holy Ghost finished decoding him, it was a girl that he, he abducted from their family house in Anambra State. He stole the girl. What is it called? Kidnap. When the girl's mother said, bring back the girl, he charged them how much to pay him. Yes. The so-called Air Force officer friend was an imposter with an Air Force ID card. And he's never in the Air Force. I asked the girl, I said, this man say he's your father. He said, no, sir. Where are you from? He said, he took me from my house in Anambra State. He said, sir, please free me from his hand. Am I coming? How many times have we suffered massive losses? Because we didn't see so. Thanks. This is knowing. You just know. Somebody say amen. It comes with perception. It comes even with feelings. I'm, I'm speaking to a man who came to my office and suddenly I knew he had an affliction. And the Lord gave me a sign in my body where the sickness is in his body. Yes. So I held that part of the body. Cast it out. He was free on the spot. And the sign disappeared. <laughs> I prophesy to somebody here today in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. Out of the world, God shall begin to speak to you and you shall hear. Through the inner peace, God shall begin to speak to you and you shall hear. Through the inward witness, God shall speak to you and you shall hear. If you are saying amen, let that amen be louder. Give the Lord a big clap of hand and you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is anybody still receiving something? I kept seeing one young man. And when I saw the, the sister, I knew this person should be the wife of this person. I didn't say to talk to any of them. So the man came one day and said, Sir, I have found who to marry. I said, who is it? He said, so and so person. I said, you are right. If you have said another person, I would have told you. Oh, you will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. Number four is, so number one is through the word. And there was something I missed. One day I was preaching a message. And I was reading a plain Bible verse. So weeping me, something like, though weeping me enjoy the night joy coming in the morning your joy is coming your joy is coming something like that and so a young man came to church trusting god for who to marry and let us say that a joy has been hanging around him joy coming in the morning your joy is coming no <laughs> He came to me at the end of the service. He said, Sir, I have found this is like 24 years ago. I have found who to marry. He said, Who? 
He said, Joy. I said, How do you know? He said, It was inside your message. You were the one telling me who to marry. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So God can use the word from any angle to speak to you. And it is accurate. It is precise. So that was through the word. Now let's go to point number four. It is through the inward voice. Inward peace, like you just saw, is different from inward witness. And now, this is inward voice. In, the inward voice is what you might call the inaudible inner voice. It's a voice sounding from inside you. Like inside your heart, like inside your mind. At times, it is like the interruption of the thought. Acts chapter 10 verse 19. The Bible said, while Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said, it came, the thought was flowing, then all of a sudden, a thought came inside, a voice came inside the thought, that was speaking. In Acts chapter 8 verse 29, Philip experienced the speaking. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. In Acts chapter 13 verse 2, while the apostles and the disciples were in praying the minister that, the, to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate. This is the voice of the spirit. It is forceful. It is peaceful. It explodes your faith. I will talk about that later. When to, to know that what you heard is from God. The inward, the knowing, you just know. It's just like you have known all this while. But in the inward voice, you actually hear. The other day I was driving at the Lost Garden here. And I saw a woman in the night crying. And she came close. What is wrong with you? I'm praying, I'm trusting the Lord for my child. Your child has autism. Yes, sir, how did you know? You have an autistic child? That was knowing. You just knew. But in this voice, this was how I married my wife. The inner voice. As I prayed, then the voice began to sound and God began to give me different aspects of her life. The person you will marry is like this. The person you will marry has this kind of ability. The person you will marry has that kind of ability. And this happened for about seven days. By the time all the pieces came together, oh, is this a person? When it was coming one by one, I didn't know who it was. The person has this. The person will be like this. The person is from this kind of background. By the time it was, ah, this is somebody I have been trusting God to give a good husband now. <laughs> I knew she was a firebrand. And um, I, I, I'm trusting the Lord, praying in agreement with her. At that time, there was already someone else also hanging around. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I believe that this teaching is very practical this morning. So this is how the inward voice functioned. That was how I also stepped into ministry. Lord, I am at a junction of my life. Am I to proceed for thy medical practice? Am I to go to the UK where the door was opened to University of London, uh, Hammersmith Hospital? Am I to go into the for, uh, Middle East where there was an opening? What am I to do? So I checked out for three days. My wife was with our young baby, um, uh, our first baby then, and I left her at home, went to the mountains, and then sat. They are showing baby, right? <laughs> And went into the bush and then I was praying. And then on the second day of the prayer in the night, he said, 
the voice. What I have been telling you about, that the ministry, the assignment, the time of it has come. Really? When? Now? Where? Abuja. I haven't been there before. I don't know anybody there. And then the voice landed. Now, when I grew up, everybody had their own vision. This one will say, my vision is to do this. My vision is to be like this. And I didn't have. So I went before God. I said, Lord, what is my vision? It was a great concern. <laughs> what is my vision? Then I heard this, the voice. Let my vision, my own vision, become your vision. Wow. Your vision should be my vision. Yes, sir. Okay, what is your vision? See, my vision is to reconnect human beings back to me. To restore their destinies. Where they left in the garden. How they misrode and left me. I want to pull them back. See, and I'm giving you the tool of the word and the power to rescue them. Wow. I believe you can feel the word. I'm sure you also feel the power. <laughs> Hallelujah. In this, in this realm of hearing, especially here, inquiry is very important. God is saying, talking most of the time, but you ask questions. And if you ask and you are not hearing anything, don't be in a hurry. Be patient. Just be patient with God. But I prophesy to someone here today. Whatever God is saying to you, you shall begin to hear clearly. Can that amen be louder? Can that amen be louder? Can that amen be louder? You shall hear God clearly. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a praise and take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Also, this is what voice came when I, that man that came and the Lord told me was about to tell a lie. This inward voice also was in, instrumental. So most times, they walk together. The in, in, inner peace, inner witness, inward voice, while you are feeling the peace, while you are getting the knowing and the witness, then you could also hear the voice. Many times, they, 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 they can walk together. Many times, they can also stand alone. So that was number four. Now my time is up. I have two major more points. Can I go ahead? Number five is through the outer voice. Outer or outward voice. This is the voice that is literally audible. This is where what you heard is audible literally to the outer ear. At times you will turn and wonder whether the person who spoke is near you is literally audible. This is when divine direction gets physical. Samuel heard that in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 4 to 10. When it appeared like God was calling him. When God was calling him. And he ran to Eli because the voice was audible. It was, it was not something he heard inside. He heard it outside with this outer ear. And Eli said, no, I'm not the one calling you. If you hear it again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant hears. Jesus heard this on the cross. No, no. He heard this before the cross in John chapter 12. Verse 27 to 28. Jesus speaking, saying, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I into the world. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Then those who stood by said, It thundered. It was so physical. Even the people around, if concerning this one, they heard something, but it wasn't distinct. Only he heard what was clear. On the road to Damascus, Acts chapter 9, 
verse 4 to 7. Paul the apostle had an encounter. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he trembling. As Tony said, Lord, what will you have me do? Then move to the next verse. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So it was audible. 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 This is not as frequent as the other modes that God uses to speak to people. But it is there. The reason is very simple. When you hear something audible and hear it all the time, it's very frightening. It could be. You know, in the village, when somebody hears his name, they say, death is calling him. Am I communicating? But you have to. You have to. I mean, physical experiences can be a bit. So God limits it at times. I've had times when I'm moving on the altar and I hit somebody by my side. And I looked around to find where the person is and I realized that it was not physical. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One day I was praying and I asked God, more fire, more fire, more fire. You know what happened to me? My body began to burn literally in fire. And I lay down in the, in the, in the, in the, in the living room there crying, fire. My wife ran out. She couldn't help me. She went to the fridge, brought ice cold water, poured on my chest. Yes. Physical raw unbearable fire. Since then, I haven't asked for that kind of fire again. <laughs> Hallelujah. So before you ask for things, just be careful. One day I stepped into my office and opened the door to step in. Before I could lock it, somebody locked it. Hello? <laughs> Hallelujah. But this is a mode. And I want to say that no means of leading. At times, God just wants to let you know I'm around. There are many things that are not shareable. He just wants to let you know I am around. Angels are around. That is the outer voice, the audible voice. Number six is true visions and revelations. True visions and revelations. Maybe I will end here today. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 29. He said, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and Upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. They shall see visions. They shall dream dreams. They shall prophesy. So, in visions and revelations, I like to deal with some categories. First is dreams. These are visionary experiences during sleep, dreams. Number two, trance. This is the situation of being half asleep, half awake. At times it's also defined as where the physical senses are suspended. You are not aware, you, can't, you are not aware of the environment. And then you see things. I call it the sleep or awake junction. 
You are not sleeping. You are not awake. You are in that, in that middle. God helps me to see a lot of things in this junction. Many, plenty. Plenty, almost plenty other than dreams. Number three is vision. So you have the dreams, you have the trance, you have the vision. Vision could be still or motion. That is, you just saw something like a photograph. Or you saw you are seeing something like a movie, a film. Right? And the motion picture could be simple or full color. <laughs> It's simple, like just very, very simple, like black and white. But the other one is every single color is out. Red heart. See, just clear detail. Okay. Now, vision has three categories. So we have six C one. <laughs> Ordinary vision. Which is the one that you close your eyes in the day. You are not sleeping. You are seeing something. Then you have the night vision. Night vision at times could be confused with dreams. But the difference is that in the dream you are fully asleep. Night vision it is a vision you are seeing in the night. You are awake, but seeing it at night. At times, it could be mixed. Night vision and dream could be mixed together. The revelation of this lost garden where the Lord showed me in the night. The landmark for the location of this site happened by that mixture of a dream slash night vision. Seeing the vision of angel that said to me, when some people rushed at me and they were about to attack me and suddenly I saw a man stood and he lifted one hand and before you knew it, everybody was on the, on the floor. And I looked at him and said, who are you? He said, I'm the angel sent to fight your battles. It was like the mixture of a night vision and a dream. Tonight, God will show you some things that will change your life and change your story. Say the loudest, Amen. I have so many scriptures on night vision, but because of time, Joel chapter, Job chapter 33 verse 15, in the dream of the night, in the night vision, Job 33 15, Daniel chapter 2 verse 19, Daniel chapter 2 verse 19, um, then was a secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Daniel chapter 7 verse 1 and 2, Daniel had a lot of night visions. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. And then Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night. Night vision. Paul the apostle had a lot of night visions. Acts 16, 9. Acts 16 and in verse 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And Acts chapter 18 verse 9. Uh, also, Paul had then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. So the visions of the night. This is night vision. So we have the ordinary vision. We have the, the night vision. And then you have the open vision. Now, the categorization is only for the sake of, like they say in law, for academic purpose. <laughs> but the, the most important thing is what the impact of all is the same. It's the same. The, the, the open vision is where you are not sleeping, neither are your eyes closed, and you are seeing. That is, it is seen into the spirit realm with the open eye. You are seeing things that others are not seeing with your eyes open. The Bible talked about Balaam who fell into a trance with eyes open. Numbers chapter 24 verse 16. With open eyes. And then, the donkey of Balaam had eyes open while he was seeing the angel on the road in Numbers chapter 22 
verse 22 all the way to verse 23. Is somebody still getting anything? Are you tired? The, the, the good thing is that anything we preach about God confirms if it is from his word. So I'd like you to get ready because there shall be explosions of visions and revelations of divine directions. You believe that? Say it louder. Amen. Amen. On the road to Damascus, Paul the apostle saw open visions. Acts chapter 9 verse 3 to 8. He saw light from heaven that literally blinded his eyes. He didn't see for three days. Acts chapter 9 verse 3 to eight. He blinded his eyes. Mm. Many times I'm ministering and I could see one day, many days, lady lifted her hands and then I see the wedding ring on her ring on her hand. And I went close and I looked and the hand physically is free. But I just saw wedding ring right now. And I said, come out. I removed that ring from your hands and she said, you, you, you prayed for me in the night, removing the ring from this hand. And now it is being done in the physical. So God does that. I've seen that. One day, I saw a lady enter the car and sat on the steering and began to drive. And as she was driving, it was a man that I saw sitting on the chair, driving. And I said, wait a minute. What's happening? I see a man sitting on your, on, on your driver's seat, driving. He said, no, I was the one who drove. I said, all right, there is a masculine spirit. A spirit is camouflaging you. It's a male spirit. He said, many people say, I, I, I behave like a man. I function like a man. I do everything like a man. <laughs> I said, all right, that agenda is arrested right now. That was seen with eyes physical. Several others like that. When it is necessary for you to see such things, God will make it happen. And there are many who have seen that as well. Somebody say a loud amen. So God uses all these different ways to speak. There are many other ways, but I will just be limited to this right now. Please note the following things as I round off this morning. Because we'll need to round off right now. First of all, No channel of direction is superior to another. No channel of direction. I didn't have to see a vision before I went to Taraba. God spoke to me from the word and it was forceful enough to take us there. Don't think until you saw a vision. You haven't heard God. No channel of direction. Number two, don't struggle for any particular channel of direction. Let God speak to you as he wills. Don't struggle for any particular channel. Oh, others are seeing vision. I must see vision. There are people who have entered the hands of the devil because they want God to speak to them in one particular way by all means. Don't struggle for any particular channel of direction. So, no channel of direction is superior to another. Don't struggle for any particular channel of direction. Number three, prove all things by the word. Prove all things by the word. Prove all things by the word. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21 it says prove all things. Anything you are seeing or hearing or experiencing that does not line up with the word of God, reject it. Anything you are hearing, anything you are seeing that does not line up with the word of God, reject it. You say a vision, you had a revelation. Thus says, uh, you saw an angel that says, I am the Lord thy God. And I have come to tell thee 
You made a terrible mistake by marrying this wife you married. Lord, what do I do now? Send away your wife. What about the children? They are all witches. Send, send all of them. <laughs> See, the Lord thy God is asking you to send your witch children away because he is powerless to deliver them. Hello? So you just have to cross check. What am I hearing? Is this in line with the word of God? Is this in line with the character of God? Number four. Don't be discouraged. If you missed a step. Keep learning. If for any reason you thought you had God and it was not God. Just realize you are still a human being. That was why. Don't be discouraged if you missed a step. Keep learning. Don't let the devil let tell you, or oh, you will never be able to hear God. No, 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 no. Forget about it. You can never make it. Keep learning. That is why you are a human being. And number five, prophecies must conform to personal convictions and directions. External prophecies must conform to personal convictions and directions. That is, somebody said God told them something about you. That thing must line up with the word of God and line up with your own conviction. It doesn't matter who is saying it to you. If a person says something to you and it made you to lose your peace, Discard what they are saying. God cannot be more cannot be so interested in your life that He will be telling something somebody something about you that you, are, you don't feel peace about. There are some people who have put themselves. One day, a woman went to to the market, going to buy goods with big money. And prophet met her and said, God said you shouldn't do that business. What business should I do? Hold on. Hold on. Made that money, he returned, squandered the money and got stranded for a year. Yeah. Yes. Squandered the whole money on other things because prophet said, God said you shouldn't do that business. What other business should I do? Hold on. Death for years, stranded for years until God showed up. Anything anybody claimed they heard from God for you. If you lost your peace, let it go. If it is not in line with the word, let it go. As many as are led by the prophets are the sons of God. Is that what the Bible said? As many as are led by the spirit of God. It is, it is an exciting thing if an external prophecy confirms what you already received. It's very, very exciting. It's very, very re-energizing. Re oh, wow, this thing that God spoke to me, somebody has saw it for me and is saying to me, wow, Father, thank you. But it is very, very destructive if they are saying things to you that God is not saying to you. Can somebody say amen? amen. Finally, how do you prove that what you are hearing is of God. Four tests. Number one, the word test. Directions and revelation must pass the four, the, these four tests. There are many, but just basically four. The word test. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, anything you are hearing that does not line up with this word, it is because there is no light in them. That light, that revelation is not from God. It should line up with the word. The word test. Number two, 
the peace test. The Lord will speak peace. The vision came with peace. The dream came with peace. The revelation came with peace. The hearing came with peace. It scattered your peace. You are struggling. It just scattered your peace. It must be queried. I'm not talking of situations where maybe God says you should carry out a sacrifice and your flesh is reacting because it appears too big for you. That's not what I'm talking about. Or God says you should step into ministry and you are wondering how will I succeed in the future? Normally the body can ask such questions. The Lord you say I should abandon everything and become a pastor. Hmm. How do I feed my family? Such questions may arise. That's not what I'm talking about. But in this case, that is peace disappeared. Do you understand the difference now? There are times God may ask you to carry out some steps that your physical flesh may react and say, oh, is it possible? That's different. This one, peace is zero. Then you know something is wrong. So there is the word test. There is the peace test. Number three, the joy test. Thy word we have found, and I did eat them. And thy word was the rejoicing. Jeremiah 15, 16. Whenever you find his word that comes with his voice, there is joy, there is rejoicing. It just explodes joy in your heart. There is a joy hearing God. This is like the joy you, 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 you experience when you hear your favorite person. There is the joy test. And number four, the faith test. The, the voice of God explodes faith. If you are doubting before you, you shift level, faith cometh by hearing. If you heard, faith comes. And hearing the word or the voice of God. The faith to go to that crusade in the northeast and to dominate every devil landed. The moment I heard God said, I can enter anywhere. The whole earth is mine. I can go anywhere I want, anytime, any season. What are you saying, Lord? I have gone before you. Phew. We are, we are going. Yes, what happened? I just heard God. My wife said she saw it in my eyes. She said, wow. We have, we have heard God, we are going. Yes, we are going. All arrangements should be in place. I knew that that meeting will explode because God said, I have gone before you. If what you are claiming to be God puts you in fear rather than faith, doubt rather than, or you are trepidatious, when I heard about ministry and God said, what I've been telling you about, the time has come. I didn't care for my survival. I came into Abuja, I lived in one room. Medical doctor I am. My wife is a medical doctor. Lived in one room with four or five other people for 13 months. I wasn't afraid of the future. I didn't have a plan B. Some people said, when you came, supposedly you didn't succeed. What were you going to do? I said there was no option. I didn't think of the alternative because faith was maximal. And every devil knows today that God spoke at that time. If you can, if it does not line up with the word, you can't trace the peace. You can't trace the joy. It doesn't explode your boldness and your faith. Something is wrong with what you claim to have heard. 